You're listening to the Back Home Network, presented by Homefield Apparel. And welcome, Hoosier fans, to this special edition of the Assembly Call, presented by Homefield Apparel. And, you know, even though the Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales ended on Tuesday, you can still get 15% off your first order at Homefield Apparel using our promo code HOME, H-O-M-E. So check them out at homefieldapparel.com. But tonight, on the eve of Indiana's first big home game of the season, we have a very special guest here with us. To help us preview Wednesday night's game between Indiana and the nation's preseason number one team, North Carolina, it is Mark Titus, one of the two hosts of Titus and Tate, here with us to uh, talk about the game. The best national college basketball podcast out there, for my mind. Where's my co-host? What's going on? We're playing the Tar Heels. What happened? Yeah, where... I mean, that's why we asked you two to be on here, was to, to get Tate's North Carolina preview, and they lose a couple games, and he, he bounces on us. Uh, What's so up one with of that? The, one of the great things about doing this show with Tate through the years is uh, you, you you get a sense of his confidence level in his team, because uh, this, this man wears it on his sleeve, and he knows how well I can read him, so like he's trying to get better at like you know pretending, and so... We're in Maui um, for the Maui Invitational, and it's paradise, and it's like the most relaxing place ever. And you know, it's it, it, everybody knows how great Maui is, right? And North Carolina uh, is is playing. I think it was Portland at the time. Uh, they, mm-hmm. they, they no, they played. They played Portland. Yeah, they played because they played Portland up in the uh, the PK eighty, and they're playing terribly. Um, and Tate turns it off, and his whole attitude is like, honestly, I don't care. And for the rest of the day. You could just see him not caring, but also checking the score and care. It was like the most fascinating <laughs> thing I've ever seen, Jared. And now Carolina goes on to lose two, as we know. They're they're entering this game on a two game losing streak. Um, yes, he has. He wanted to. We, we were supposed to be in Bloomington for the game tomorrow. Yes, he cancel. He he turned to me and said, "I'm canceling the trip. <laughs> I'm not going." <laughs> <laughs> and then he agreed to come on your show tonight and uh i don't know what happened because like as of this morning he was coming on and then i don't know he must have he must have heard something because he, he he texted me this afternoon and was like i don't know if i can do it <laughs> <laughs> so this man, was gonna be a the, very friendly space too you know we weren't gonna grill him or anything this I mean, this game has turned on, on its head man like it this, has. this when it was announced this was like the big you know this was i i don't i don't need to explain it to all the indiana fans but i mean this was I was I was fired up. I was like, "This is going to be awesome. This is another. This is one of many we're back moments for Indiana. You know, like the Hoosiers <laughs> yeah. are going to win. You're going to dust off the shirts. You're going to you're going to wear them again, and uh, someone's going to throw one to Mike Woodson, and uh, as he stormed the court, he's going to hold it up. It says we're back. You know, and he like finds the camera, and he's hold- that was what this was supposed to be. And now, man, this thing's turned completely on its head. And uh, you know, I I. I'm obviously on on the Indiana side of this rivalry, or I don't I wouldn't call it a rivalry, but the 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 game. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I I don't want to be too overconfident because it it feels like everything is going Indiana's way. It feels like the game is at home and uh, Indiana's playing better, and it's 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 two teams that return a lot from last year. But Indiana is like riding the good momentum of that, and North Carolina has a lot of problems because of that. Like I think most Carolina mm-hmm. fans would love to see maybe some of their guys go away or at least like the attitudes they had last year come back. Cause it's like, like the fact that they brought everyone back is like kind of a detriment to them this year. So I don't, I, it seems it's, like it. a, it's a fascinating game. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. It is. We'll hold that thought. Cause we are going to talk a lot about that game. We have a jam packed episode here for you. Uh, we're also going to discuss some facts that are being overlooked by the college basketball media like why a road win at Xavier is definitely more impressive than a few lame neutral court victories at the Phil Knight event. That is clear. We're going to talk about that. Uh, and we will also analyze the Big Ten strong start to the season, which is continuing as we speak here with uh, more dominance over the ACC. Uh, all that and more. But first, Don Fisher. Shot is up. Missed it. Oh, no. Boozer. He missed. Tip up now. No, 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 no. And it was. The Boozers have three two. I always wanted to do that. Every time I hear you guys say Woody Durham, get a little Don Fisher love. We got it. Yeah. 
We should uh <laughs> I I should propose that to Tate that if, if Indiana wins that we uh we switch it up to Don Fisher. We should we should like use whoever the, the local radio guy is for whatever yes. team beat beat North Carolina most recently. <laughs> no, or so. I mean that was when that was the call when Indiana beat Duke, which I figured would be great for everybody. Oh else. yeah, I was, yeah. I was trying to make it a very friendly opening there for Tate, you know. But uh, that's fine. That's all right. That's all right. Um we'll, we'll, we'll have fun without him. We will. We will. Okay, so let's talk about this game a little bit. You and I were texting about this some last night or the night before, whenever it was, that, you know, the the complexion of this game is different. You know, when it was first announced in all season, it was kind of like, okay, you know, preseason number one is coming in. This It's kind of another chance at a we're back moment, like what you said. And now it really does feel different. You know, it feels a little bit more like, hey, here's this, you know, a two loss ACC team that is struggling. It's still North Carolina, but if this Indiana team is who we think they are, they should take care of business at home in this game. And there's a little bit more of kind of an expectation of victory now than, hey, this is another big moment to storm the court and all that craziness. And I kind of think that's better for this program and where it is. Like, I agree. We had the moment last year when we beat Purdue. We've had plenty of the we're back moments. If Indiana's really back, they need to just take care of business against a good team. So yeah. I think I'm, I'm actually – it's a little bit less fun, <laughs> you know, like yeah. slightly, but I think it might actually be better for the program. I, I would never I would never be the type of person that tells people to not get excited about their team or not storm the court or not um, – I, I'm I'm not that guy, you know. Like if you, if if IU or any other school wanted to storm the court after every single win, uh, by all means, like you're not going to hear me say don't do that. Um, but I I do think in terms of the long term health of the Indiana basketball program, getting to a point where beating a team like North Carolina on your home court, again, storm if you want, be excited if you want, text your friends, be like, I think we have something here. Do all of the these things. But also, like, there needs to be a part of, like, now we beat North Carolina. Now who do we play next? Oh, it's Rutgers. Okay, so now let's go kick their ass. Instead of, like, you know, almost forgetting that there's another game or that there's a rest of a season and then, like, taking the next couple weeks off to just, like, high like last each year, other. Yeah. The Michigan yeah, game yeah. after Purdue, which was just yes, a disaster. exactly. Yeah, and that yeah. seems to be a common theme with Indiana is just, like, there, there's so much high five in that you forget that – the season's not over and there's more basketball <laughs> to be played. Um, so I, I think that's a good thing. I think, I think, uh, you know, North Carolina is still a, a very good basketball team. I think like the, the, the demise of North Carolina is being overstated a little bit. Like they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're going to put out a good product on the floor and Indiana's going to have to play well to beat them. Um, but I will say the one like thing I might be slightly concerned about uh, with everything flipping on its head is that the pressure is now on Indiana. It is firmly on Indiana. I think coming into this game, Part of what makes Assembly Hall such a tough place to play, and and why it gets circled, uh, uh, you know, all, or, or it, it, part of like what makes these environments great is when it's not just Assembly Hall; it's when it's when Indiana has a team that's good enough to beat like one of the top upper echelon teams, but they aren't the top upper echelon team. Like that's my favorite Assembly Hall environment is when a mm-hmm. number one North Carolina comes in, and Indiana is like. I don't a tenth would be fine, like what they are now, but like more like sixteenth, you know. I think that's mm-hmm. the perfect recipe for Assembly Hall to be bonkers. Um, because the team just plays so freely and so loosely, and it's like we have nothing to lose, like let's just let it rip. Now I think the pressure isn't on Indiana and and um I, I North Carolina, as much as they've had trouble, like what's interesting to me is looking at their schedule. The ACC is not good this year. The AC, I mm-hmm. mean, for that's we, we could talk about that in a little bit with like the Big Ten ACC part of this all. Uh, but the ACC is not very good. Carolina's non conference schedule is basically Indiana. Um, they, they did the PK 85, which was a disaster. Mm-hmm. They play my Ohio State Buckeyes in Madison Square Garden, which we're ranked 25th right now. So, like, that, that will be a good win if they beat us, but it's not like you know, that's not a, a jump off the page at you win as of right now. And then they play Michigan. And other than that, they play like basically nobody. So like Carolina's in this weird spot where this is suddenly like they're circling this game and saying like, this is our one opportunity in the non-conference to make a statement. And we were the number one team in the country coming into the season. It's it's all very bizarre. I don't know how we got here so fast in the season. We're supposed to be <laughs> we're supposed to be warming up to the season. And all of a sudden, everything that we thought we would think about this game has been thrown out the window. Well, I feel like that happens a lot in November. We have these, you know, these small sample sizes and only a few games and we try to react to what we have. But then once we get to February and March, we're going to look back on some of the stuff we talked about in November and be like, "Eh, okay, well, that didn't really pan out or this did. 
you know, as you look at this game, and I know you've probably watched more North Carolina than you have Indiana, because Indiana's basically only had one game worth watching for you know someone who doesn't isn't crazy enough to do a post game show after every game, um, and that was of course the Xavier game, which was an impressive road win. I mean, no mm-hmm. question about it. Um, what are your impressions of this Indiana team so far this season? Uh, I I think coming into the season it was shooting that was the big thing. Uh, that's the 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 that that's what I've always been. You know, I, I I'm kind of I know I'm preaching to the choir, but like that's been the the problems with Indiana, and certainly last year it was like man, if they could just literally have any confidence whatsoever in their outside shots that would be that would be nice um and so far i don't know i i I think it's going well it's going better uh i again the the competition's tough it's a lot easier to shoot over uh you know guys who are two or three inches shorter than the big 10 opponents will be and not quite as athletic and all that um but no i i i think indiana is is like i said like they're 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 one of the teams that bring in bringing the, the core the nucleus back uh, ha- has worked wonders for them. And I think w- one of the other things that's interesting is like some of these big guys around the country uh, and North Carolina is one of them is like Armando Baycott coming back. Um, I-, I don't want to say it's hurt Carolina, but like he's, he's kind of like an elephant in the room for them where he's like their best player, quote unquote, but he's also like kind of a liability in a lot of different ways. And it's like this uncomfortable conversation with the North Carolina fans are having it amongst themselves. Um, and we could be having with Tate if he was here tonight. Um, <laughs> if only. <laughs> but I think I think Trace has handled his role well as like I like we're going to continue to feed me the ball. This is how this is like I am the focal point of this offense. But you don't want to become a black hole. And I think like that's that's like one of the big narratives I've been fascinated with with college basketball as a whole is like this was supposed to be the year the big man. I think it is going to be, and I think it's you know so far it has become that in a lot of ways. But um, at the end of the day, guard play is what's going to win you games in March. And uh, I, I think Indiana's guards have played well enough for, for Indiana to, to be a real threat. It's just, you know, if we're being honest with, with each other, the, the schedule has not been great. And and that's not to like rip on IU. Cause like you, it was, it was structured in such a way that like now it picks up, you know, you go to Kansas, you got Arizona coming up. Yep. Uh, but so far it's like basically the one game from Xavier that we have to go off of. Um, and it was a good win, but it was also like, man, felt like they're trying to hand it away there a few different times, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a road win, and there aren't a lot of there aren't a lot of true road wins amongst the uh, the the ranked teams right now. So there is that, you know. Yeah, no, no question. And you know, even in the other five games, I mean, Indiana has taken care of business as they're you know expected to, beating those teams like they should, which recent Indiana teams haven't always done. Um, give our our listeners a little bit of insight on this North Carolina team that's coming in. I mean, I think a yeah. lot of us are familiar having watched them last year, you know, do a service to all college basketball fans uh by sending Mr. K uh, out a loser, which was just great to see. Really, I feel like we should all have a little more patience and appreciation for North Carolina. Yeah, no kidding. They did that, yeah. you know. <laughs> they should at least get like a month long grace period, you know. Um but give us give us some insight. I mean, we know about Baycott. Um what are the keys, do you think, in this game, you know, for Indiana looking at, at this well, North Carolina I'm, team? So Carolina, like the, the, the problems have basically arisen from uh, they have a Caleb Love, Armando Baycott problem where Armando Baycott has got all the, it, it, it's a really fascinating thing because I think a lot of teams um, you, you would you could point to and say that they have chemistry problems or whatever. And sometimes that's just like a, a way to like hand wave away, you know, like subpar play and you're just like yeah they got chemistry problems they'll figure it out that is real like I, it's clear as day when you watch carolina what their issues are and it is that it's that armando baycott is a preseason all-american caleb loves like i'm the guy that hit the shot like i'm the guy that i'm the guy that carried us to to xyz in the in march you know like whatever whatever level it was that carolina got to like that was me i did that um but armando baycott gets all the love meanwhile uh you know they lose brady manic and they replace him with pete nance which you know, Big Ten fans know Pete Nance pretty well, and Pete Nance is not a bad basketball player. But I think Brady Manick, like some of the the things that he brought to the table for Carolina, unlocked, um, you know, un- unlocked Caleb Love and let him have more space. And Armando Baycott, like people couldn't help and double in certain ways that because Brady Manick wasn't just a shooter. Like, like I, I think Pete Nance is shooting the ball well. I think he's shooting still like forty two percent from three this year. But um, Brady Manick was like beyond just like a good shooter. He was like one of those dudes that's like a threat where you, you're almost panicking when he catches the ball at the three point line. And like there's there's over closing, you know, the overextended closeouts and just get guys scrambling, all that kind of stuff. 
So from a personnel standpoint, I think losing Brady Manic is a huge blow for them that they're still trying to figure out. And um, but really the issue is the chemistry. Uh they they have seemed to have abandoned like any semblance of of uh being coachable. Like if you watch the end of that Bama Carolina game a couple of days ago, my God, they they just like Caleb Love was just like, it's my time. And we're like, Caleb, please, for the love of God, pass the ball like one time. <laughs> like one possession, pass the ball. Didn't he um, take like 30 some shots that game? 37. 37 <laughs> shots. Now, granted, it went to four overtimes, but like still, I mean, that man, if that was me, I would be like a middle reliever, like in the dugout with just the big pack of ice on my shoulder or, or a starter that went, you know, seven and a third. Like I'm just sitting there. Um, so Caleb Love, that, that that's basically the issue. If it boils, if it boils down to that. They brought everybody back, and all these guys spent all all off season, like I said earlier, with like Indian, where you're high fiving everybody, and you forget that like we have another season to play, and we have, I I think the 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 problem or, or um one of the things that's going to be fascinating with Carolina moving forward this season is that they they do have that sense that 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 they they can just do the break class break glass in case of emergency because that's kind of what they did last year i mean they were an ac last year they lost a pit at home for god's sakes um mm -hmm. duke wiped the floor with them at home in in chapel hill um no carolina fan wants to talk about that one by the way because they did get the better of duke later in the season but duke beat their ass in chapel hill and so I think there's this thought that they can always just break the glass in case of emergency. But it, what's interesting is like, I'm not really sure they know what's inside the glass once they break it. You know, <laughs> like I think like, mm -hmm. I think they're just like, we'll be fine. We'll just break the glass. We got our secret weapon here. And I'm like, what, what is the secret weapon? And they're like, Oh, that's a good point. I guess we were an eight seed last year. Weren't we? We weren't really that good. <laughs> so um, I, 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 I mean, if you're an Indiana fan, how do how does Indiana lose? I guess like that's where you're going to is like, you're, you're, you're panicking. Like how, do, what does a loss look like? Caleb love, uh, I will be making jokes about him all season. I've, I've seen enough from him already to know that like, he's, it's going to be fun to just like joke about him shooting 37 times in a game. Um, he's got that bracy right in him that, that, uh, you know, he's going to shoot mm -hmm. Carolina out of a lot of games, but I'll be damned. There'll be that one night where he makes 26 of those 37 shots. And you're like, <laughs> is this guy, is this guy the greatest college basketball player of all time? Um, Armando Baycott looks a little out of it. Like he looks like he's, he's, he'd rather be anywhere else. He looks like a guy that's like, wake me up when March rolls around. Like, I don't, this is boring. Like, can we go back yeah. to the time when we were knocking out coach K from the final four? Like that was fun, but now I have to play who and where, like, I don't want to do that. Um, but you know, maybe Armando Baycott's juices, competitive juices are flowing. I know him and trace have a, you know, I know they're familiar with one another and, um, you know, that certainly seems like a matchup that, that Armando Baycott would have circled. And um, they're both banged up, know. too, which is going to be. They are both banged up. You know, Trace has been a little hobbled. Up. I mean, he still, and, you know, has been playing well, but he didn't, he didn't look like himself the last time out. And I will say, R.J. Davis, North Carolina's true point guard. Caleb Love gets labeled the point guard, but R.J. Davis is the actual point guard. Um, he is he is one of the best point guards in the country. And whether he'll get a chance to showcase it all year, I don't know. Um, whether he'll even get the ball or Caleb Love will always have it. I don't know. But like RJ Davis, if he was on any other team and you're like runner offense and do what you do, he is very much like top five point guard talent wise in the country. I do believe that. Um, so that's the thing with Carolina, man, is they and Leaky Black, you know, everyone remembers him uh from the team last year. He's back. He's he's a great defender, great glue guy. Uh they, they have the pieces. It just it very much is like they they're just going through the motions. They are they are demonstrably worse at basically everything this year than they were last year. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, it, and then the only thing you could think is like, they, they're just bored. I don't know. That's the only thing I can think. So like, if I'm an IU fan, I don't want to get too excited about like, we're definitely going to run away with this. Cause like maybe going to assembly hall in the ACC big 10 challenge is the exact type of environment that finally gets them to wake up. And they're like, ah, oh, this is, this feels like final four again. This feels like, you know, this has a familiar uh, uh, vibe to like when we beat Duke and Cameron or when we, um, you know, ended Duke's season. So, yeah, you know, you obviously played on some really good, you know, Ohio State teams that were successful, had guys that went to the NBA, played in big environments, succeeded in big environments, made NCAA tournament runs, which this North Carolina team has done for a team like that coming into an environment like Assembly Hall. What is the reaction? Like those guys aren't going to be intimidated, are they? Like they're probably more likely no. to get a little juiced up than they are to get yeah. intimidated. That's what I. That's what I would say. That's what I mean. Like that's that. That would be the fear. Is like they're kind of going on autopilot. You could say like the PK eighty five. Is is that what we called it? The Phil Knight Legacy. The Phil Knight. 
There were two different. Yeah, there's like there the, were two different <laughs> tournaments. I was I wasn't clear. The Phil Knight feet kissing ceremony. Uh, the Phil Knight, whatever it was. Um, I think the one Purdue one was the Phil Knight Helms. Uh, <laughs> the Phil Knight Helms <laughs> inv- Invitational. <laughs> <laughs> no, they they didn't give him a trophy. They're gonna wait like sixty years and then vote on it, and then. <laughs> And then they'll and then claim call, it. Yeah, and then they'll claim it. Then Purdue will raise the banner and say, we did it, you know, everybody. Like, we're going to call the team to let them know they won. And everyone's like, the team's dead. All the, the whole team's dead. <laughs> no one from that team is alive to know that they won the national title. Um, no, I, it, I, I I think it's that. I, th- I think Carolina will be, uh, you know, the, the, I, I think they'll be fired up. I, I, I do think you'll get Carolina's best effort. What that looks like, um, I don't know, but because uh, because the Phil Knight deal, as as much as it was made out to be like a big deal, and you know, there's a lot of great teams up there, and Carolina kind of didn't really play. I mean, Bama's okay, but Iowa State and Portland, those are the three games they have. It's just kind of wild looking at that bracket and who they could have mm-hmm. played. Um, but there's no fans there, man. Like that environment was dead. It was yeah. terrible. Um, so this is the first. I would say this is their first game of the season that's going to feel similar yeah to like last year where they had they were playing their best basketball the kind of environment where they know they're on national television everybody's watching all that kind of thing so uh but again with this team man like if that might be that might be good for IU because that might be like Caleb Love saying it's Caleb Love time as Armando Baycott saying it's Armando Baycott time as RJ Davis is like (laughs) it's my time and (laughs) and Hubert Davis is like what the hell is this why can't we go back to last year it's they're they're fascinating they're they are so I've I, I I'm not hitting the panic button because it's November, but they're to be preseason number one in the country. They have, like I said at the top, like they do, they don't have a lot of opportunities to pad their NCAA tournament resume. Which I'm not saying they're not going to make the tournament. Um, but it's just like I, I it it almost feels like they're trying to get an eight seed again this year and then, <laughs> then run it back. Like that's what the that's what feels like the plan is with them. Uh, so how many excited text messages has your dad sent you about Malik Renew so far this season? Oh, he's a big fan. Yeah, he's a big <laughs> fan. <laughs> I think all IU fans are. Yeah, he, he's he's a big Malik. Uh, Ger- Geronimo he loves. Um, mm-hmm. I, 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 I feel like, and I, I hate to report this, but I am a big J journalist and I just report what I'm told. Uh, I sense that the tide might be turning with Trey. Which like I haven't watched enough to pay attention, but like Dad was like, I don't. So what what what's the story there? He's just not making shots. Like he's like he's. I my, my dad, I will say, and and I kind of back him up on this. My dad goes crazy for guys who are coaches' sons who can't shoot. Like he mm-hmm. goes crazy for it. He's like, how could you? How could you grow up with a coach in the house and like taught you how to play the sport and you don't know how to shoot? It doesn't make any sense. And I kind of am with him on that. But I love Trey Galloway, so I can't. Well, and Mike Woodson loves Trey Galloway, which is the yeah. important thing, and that's why he plays. So his shot actually does look better this year. I don't know. I think he's like two for five maybe this year from three. He made a couple in the exhibition games too. Let me look. He's two for okay. four. Um, okay. And his shot does look better. Like he clearly kind of changed his mechanics a little bit. Things are just a little bit, you know, everything's a little bit more in line, a little smoother. So, so far, it's a very small sample size, but so far the early returns are good on Trey's shot. Who knows? We'll see if Here's, it carries there's... forward. Who I, I, he, he didn't say that. My dad just texted me one time. I was in Maui and I had a, uh, I had a pina colada. I was like probably floating in the pool drinking a pina colada and like my Apple Watch buzzes and I see my dad and just says like Trey and then like a, a mad emoji and I was just like, well, was it, like, might now, because, it might be because it might be because he now, took now, a <laughs> it might be because he took a spill and so he's been out. He didn't play in the last game, so he's been dealing with a little bit of an injury oh, to his knee. But I he is so. he practiced, so he is supposed to play against North Carolina, but. I think okay. everybody's a little worried that knee thing could linger a little bit. Okay. So that may be yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Cause I, I that, that was shocking to me. My dad was like, he, I was like dead trait, but I don't know. Last year drove him crazy. He just texted me like, how does Trey Galloway not shoot? And I don't know. That's, that's, I feel like that's every Indiana fan though. Like it's, it is, it is. I will never, ever, as long as I live, get used to seeing an Indiana team, not be able to shoot. It's like, no matter how many times it happens year after year, like seeing a, the team that goes out on the floor with Indian on their chest. And it's like, and then you hear the announcers say they're one Achilles heels. They can't shoot. You're like, how does this happen? I know. Well, Hey, right now but we're in the be- top 50 in yeah. three point yeah. shooting yeah. percentage. So it's better you know. so far. Yeah. Yes. It's better we'll, so far. we'll see if that carries forward. Let me ask you this. Um, and again, I know that you didn't watch, you know, all the cupcake games, but 
you know, one of the big storylines for the team this year is Xavier Johnson and Jalen hood Shafino. Xavier, the fifth-year senior, Jalen hood Shafino, the freshman. And, look, Indiana has not had good guard play for years. You know, Xavier Johnson was a breath of fresh air last year because here's actually a guy who's confident and aggressive and can pass, and now you've got another one of those in hood Shafino. And the clear benefit is for 40 minutes, Indiana has a really competent playmaker who can push and transition, can make things happen in the half court. They both have, you know, a few warts in their game, but they're really, really good players. And they've played really well individually. They've struggled a little bit to me together. Like it feels like it's a bit of an uneasy pairing because they're two guys who now it's not a chemistry thing. Like they played together in Pittsburgh. Like they obviously, you know, have good chemistry, but they seem to me like two guys who are used to always having the ball. And now when they're both on the court together, you know, they have to learn how to function off ball too. And yeah. so it has led, I think, to a few kind of slow starts for the starting unit as they kind of work through that. How do you see that kind of thing playing out? Because the, the benefits of having two point guards are clear, but you know, you have to have guys who are able to function off ball when they don't have the ball in their hands. Yeah, I, I, I think it's uh, it's a deal that you, you don't put too much pressure on trying to figure it out. I, th I I don't think we need like a defined like you bring the ball up this time. I bring it up or you bring you want you want to bring it you bring it like just if you have the ball, bring it up. If you want to run the I, I, I think those are the best because um basketball in general, like as you're watching more, is certainly at the NBA level it's become this where we're uh I mean, what even is a point guard at the NBA? But if you watch the yeah. NBA, you're like, I don't know. Is, is Giannis a point guard? Is LeBron Luka. a point guard now? Is Luca <laughs> point? Like, what even is point yeah. guards anymore? That has trickled down to college uh, in, in, in a lot of ways where, um, at, you know, college basketball hasn't gone full positionless yet, but uh, it, it, it does feel like the best teams and the, the, the teams that are guard oriented do have that approach where it's like, not, not even just bringing the ball up the floor, but it's just it's just like a fluid thing where there just becomes an understanding of like it's your time, you take it, I'll take it now. Uh, so I, I think for me, it's 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 less about like trying to figure out the defined roles and more of like what you said of just like having the chemistry, like because what what Carolina has going on, which is like something similar, um, it it does feel like it's more an ego deal where it's like, I not, not to say that Carolina's guys are quote unquote bad guys. I don't mean that, but there just seems to be like this, this, this tug of war with like the ego of like, it's, I get to take the shots and you're the one that passes to me. And you know, that's, these are our rules. Um, and I think like the, when you see teams at their best and that was when, that was what Carolina was doing in March was like, like RJ Davis had an incredible game against Duke and then Caleb love hits the big shot at the end. And like, I don't know that they're, 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 if you go back and rewatch that game, there never really felt like there was like a, um, you know, like a, a, a defined, like, okay, so the first five possessions you do this and I do this or whatever, it was just like a fluid understanding. I guess at that point in the season, they figured it out. And um, I guess, I don't know what happened in the off season. Cause they seemed to have un, un remembered that, but um, <laughs> I, I think, I think that's the approach for IU is just, uh, just get the reps, honestly. I and I, I think like games like this will be helpful because you kind of put your feet to the fire a little bit and you figure out uh, who wants to do what. But I, I don't. I mean, I'm with I'm with you. Like you don't want. Uh, yeah, it's something you want to sort out. But I don't. I I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's something that needs to like. I don't think like Mike Woodson needs to call them into his office and say, "All right, so here's Ooh. the roles I see for you guys." I yeah. think it's just like let them play, sort of let it figure it out and and be patient with it because. Um, again, like the goal for Indiana is not to win one game in November and then high five each other and say, we did it. The goal is to make a deep run in March. And if you slowly like let this stuff build, um, you're going to be in a much better spot. Yeah, no, I agree completely. And it does seem like they kind of have that idea where it's basically whoever is getting the ball is getting we, it and going because they want to play in transition. So even the big guys are getting it and taking it. In, in, in 07, um, our, our Ohio State team that went to the national championship, we had uh, Jamar Butler was a starting point guard on the Big Ten champion Ohio State team from 06 uh, with Terrence Styles and, and and that group, uh, uh, J.J. Solinger, Jared's older brother, uh, Matt Sylvester, that, that team. So J Jamar Butler's a starting point mm -hmm. guard. Mike Conley comes in. He's a freshman. Jamar moves to the two. And Mike's running point because Mike is Mike Conley and he's going to be, you know, he's, he's, he's incredible. Yeah. Um, and we kind of had a similar sort of thing that we, we were better at disguising because we were just so damn talented and like, you know, and Mike is so much easy. Mike is so 
good at being able to play with anybody. But uh, that, that's where my mind went when you asked me the question. Because that, that was an example of something that was like a very successful transition for Jamar, who Jamar wanted the ball in his hands. And then Mike left and went to the NBA. And then the next year, Jamar, like, you know, went back to point guard and was killing it and um, had a great year individually. But uh, there, the, it's, it, but, but I, I just remember like that. There, there was never a moment in time where, where Coach Mod was like yelling, do this or that, or, you know, they just kind of yeah. started figuring it out. And Jamar, like early on in the season, was like, I'm the point guard, right? And and then slowly, like he, he started realizing Mike setting him up was actually almost better. He's like, oh, I don't have to do all that hard work. I can just kind of mm -hmm. like spot up and shoot threes. This is sick. You Okay, you go ahead and bring the ball up. I'll go stand over here, you know? Um, so that that's an example I my mind went to as you were bringing it up of like uh, guards trying to figure out their roles and everything. Yeah, well, look, and I fully agree. I mean, I think with I think patience will be rewarded because they're they're such good players, and you know, I think once they kind of figure it out together, they're going to be really tough uh, for anybody to stop. Let me ask you one more IU related question about Trace Jackson Davis. You know, assuming he is fully healthy this year, he is going to accumulate stats that we haven't seen. He's going to be in the top five in points, all time leading rebounder, all time leader in blocks. I mean. You know, from a production standpoint, he's just, you know, going to be basically off the charts. Mm -hmm. What do you think is at stake for him from a legacy perspective? And like when you look at Trace Jackson Davis, like how mm -hmm. do you view him kind of in the annals of IU basketball? Um, That's a great question. That's a that that is a that is a great question that I don't think I've ever really like stopped and thought about because it's uh, it's in the so I'm, I'm thinking of like the uh, the IU guys that are younger than me. So I graduated Ohio State in 2010, and I'm just like trying to think of like this new, uh, you know, like the Crean era when when Crean finally because like Crean the IU teams when I was in school were terrible. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think though there was like yeah like the 08 because yeah yeah the Crean teams because that was yeah like 08 was Samson and 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 yep. you know you had DJ a good White Eric Gordon year that 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 was my sophomore year and then the Korean era takes over. So I'm, I'm like thinking of it from that perspective. And um, I don't know, like Yogi is a legend. Yogi's a first ballot hall of famer. I think like Oladipo and Zeller. And then like, you start getting into guys like Jordan holes and, and you know, there's obviously a lot of great players, but uh, for me, like Yogi is the guy. And I think like trace is at that point where like the longevity and like the face of the program and all that kind of thing, he is, he has gotten to that point. What he hasn't done Um has had the success he hasn't won a big 10 championship he hasn't uh you know gone on a deep run in, in march and i think like that's ultimately what you get remembered by and i, I and i don't mean to yeah. like put too much pressure on the kid and say that like you're a failure if you don't do these things uh because he's incredible he's a great player and he'll be you know he'll never have to pay for a, a beer the rest of his life in bloomington probably but um yeah i i think that's the missing piece and i think like seeing him carry this team to uh you know again i don't want to say we're, we're, we're waiting for another we're back moment but yeah like indiana going on a deep run where it doesn't feel like a fluke and it like sets up the the next iteration of what the mike woodson era will be um for indiana i think that's what that that's what his legacy will be i think like if mike woodson stays in indiana and i know he's an older man and he's not going to be there for 30 years but if if trace they say goodbye to trace jackson davis the program keeps going on this this positive momentum and it goes back to the heights of that the indiana fans wanted at i think trace jackson davis is you know that 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 becomes his legacy is like he built the what what we're seeing now you know like i, I he, he's the kind of guy that like like when when bill self won the national title uh this year and devon dotson was in the crowd and he he gave him a hat and a, you know, he, I, I think that's what he did. He gave him, a, he gave him a championship hat and a shirt. And um, I think he got a ring too. And he's like, this is you, you did this. You, you helped us. You should have got one in 2020, but you built like this current iteration of Kansas basketball. I think that's what Trace Jackson Davis cool. like to do. But so I, I, I think, uh, you know, if, if in fact IU gets upset in the first round, doesn't win the big 10 or whatever, he's definitely not a failure. Um, because yeah, if, if like the momentum continues, uh, he, he's someone that that you in, in the same way, like I look back on Yogi Ferrell and I'm like, man, this guy. This guy like never won a national title or went to a final four or whatever, but like his his just steady play across the the board of um, so many iterations of what Indiana was and the ups and downs and all that. And just to have that face, who's like, I got this for four straight years was incredible. So anyway, what's your gut feeling on tomorrow night? <sighs> 
Honestly, I, I, I think, uh, I think the Hoosiers get up big early. I think Carolina, um, I think Carolina makes a game of it, but Indiana wins rather comfortably. I'd say like seven to 10 point win. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, I, 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 I don't want to, again, man, like I'm, I'm, I'm scared to be too confident because Carolina is very, very good, but I, they're, they're a mess right now. They, they just can't seem to figure out anything. They, um, uh, yeah, I don't know, but you, you just never know what team you're going to get from them. Cause that's the thing. Like the pieces are there. We've seen it before. They know the recipe. Uh, but I, I think Indiana's locked in and they're playing great basketball right now. And, um, I, I, I think Indiana might honestly be a better team. Not, not just like at this moment in time in the season, but I think even if like Carolina had come out of the gate playing really well, I still think I would have liked Indiana in the game. So like now that Carolina is not playing well, you know, Indiana's legit. Like I, I don't have a problem mm-hmm. saying that. Like Indiana was the one team I thought coming into the year, the one team in the Big Ten that actually had national title aspirations. Um, unfortunately, they're no longer the only team in the Big Ten. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like in, I, I think the Hoosiers are better, and I think they'll prove it, and I think the crowd will be awesome. Hopefully, hopefully the uh, Carolina sucking hasn't dampened the enthusiasm for the game. Oh, I don't think so. I think I think Assembly Hall will be ready. Yeah, for, I would uh, assume for so. Prime time moment. I would assume um, so. It, but I do think it's interesting. Like you mentioned it earlier, like there's underdog Assembly Hall, and then there's like confident we expect to win Assembly Hall, and yeah. they're two very different vibes when you're in the arena. And I think that's what's happened is now we're going to shift a little bit more to like kind of confident Assembly Hall. Which can, yeah, of well, course, turn to pensive assembly hall if things yes. aren't going very well. Uh, but I think that's more of what we'll get, I've, which is I've good because that's what needs to be the habit. <laughs> right. I've seen like every iteration of assembly hall, and that that's the one that scares me is like the the Rutgers game last year when Ron Harper was like, this is great. You guys are loud. and but like like the, When you're the underdog coming into assembly hall, the atmosphere like almost backfires on Indiana because then like the underdog sometimes is like, I get to shut all these people up and they feed off of that energy and they love the whole Mm -hmm. scene of it all. And it's like, wait a second. Like, I I don't know. That's why the most dangerous Indiana teams are the underdogs. They are, (laughs) they they really are like Indiana at home. Assembly Hall is the hardest place to play in the world when Indiana is like a five point dog. That's where that's when Indiana is like favored by 15. That's not as hard. (laughs) It's it's so much harder when they're a five point dog. Um, so that's what scares me, but but Indian is a better that. But I, I, again, I want to get to a point where I'm like no longer doing these like mystic type like like voodoo jinxes and all that kind of stuff. And you're like, listen, Indian is a better team. You're at mm-hmm. home. Uh, Carolina is banged up in a way that that Indian isn't, um, or to an extent, Indian isn't. Go win the goddamn game. You know, like go win the game. Yes. That's it. It's that simple. Yes. Just go win the game. And that's that's really all we have to do. And not we, as in, in I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say we. I meant like. Sorry, that was weird. No, it's but okay. That's you, that's all. Um, that's all that I was. I was speaking as though I was in Indiana. I was in the NLA. Let's go win the game. That's all we have to do. Your dad's an um, Indiana fan, so technically you're yeah. an Indiana fan, even if you went to. I get. I get a bunch of crap. Down. I but I was saying the we. I I didn't mean to slip the we in as though I'm an Indiana guy. I meant, it was me speaking as though it was a hypothetical. I'm sorry. I've gone too far. No, it's cool. I get a lot of we crap. Know, I get a lot of crap from people for doing that. So I want because we know that you're a Virginia guy, I'm as am Virginia I. Guy. Noted, noted Virginia fans, and Virginia are currently coming back. They are now down just two to Michigan, and so we're going to get out of here soon so that we can go watch the end of this game. Which, by the way, and I, I want to get your thoughts on the Big Ten as a whole. Yeah, and this is where I was going to make fun of Tate for how bad the ACC is, but we can't do that since he's not here. But that's okay. He knows, <laughs> so I don't think we need to rub it in. You know. I do want to let you know the segment that you guys did about Purdue. Uh, it was excellent podcasting. Like you made really good points, but there were two particular times where you made me want to throw up. And that was when you compared their guards to Ty Jerome and Ty Kyle Jerome. Guy, yeah. my favorite non Indiana set of guards of the last 20 years in college basketball. And then when you made the astute but angering point that Matt Painter has basically just recreated Bob Knight basketball in West yes. Lafayette, minus the banners and the championships, of course, right, right. the most important part of Bob Knight basketball, but he's done a nice little imitation, which, you know, and all Indiana fans in their private moments will admit to each other at times, Man, I kind of like watching Purdue run off. I know. You know? I, know. Like, I like the way they play. I know. Um, so I yeah, so I did. I did want to throw up, but I did. It, it was good. It was good. They were it's, good points. It just... I'm I, I'm fired up because I <laughs> I think the IU Purdue rivalry is is about to just go to the moon. I think it. I think yes. it's like I think it's positioned to be 
um, the best rivalry in college basketball for the next few years. And if not longer, I don't know, but like right now where we're at with the rivalry, um, it's incredible. And, and, and I think that's part of it. I really do. I think that like every Indiana fan has like an idea of what Indiana basketball should look like. And if you wrote it down, if you wrote down, like these are the tenets of what Indiana basketball should be. And then you watch Purdue play. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they check every box <laughs> and that has to be, you know, like that's, and, and, and there's, I don't know, there's something like beautiful about that, but like the Jersey say the wrong word. So you're going to hate them. But then like some parties like, I hate them. And they leave not- too early in March. Other yes, than that. Yes. yes. Yeah. No, no, it's true. And, and it's, 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 it's so perfect. Like the way it's positioned and um, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm fired up for it. I really am. Cause I, I think I'm going to try, I don't want to uh, make any promises, but I, I'm, I am trying, I, I, I've, I've made some phone calls and we're putting it on the calendar. I'm going to try to get to both Indiana Purdue games this year. I'm trying Dude, to go to both. of. We're them. doing our meetup. We're doing our meetup for the Indiana Purdue game. If you guys are going to be in town in Bloomington. Yes. We're going to be there. We're going to do like a live show. That probably, one's first, probably right? after the game. Yes. That one's, uh, that, yes. That one's, and then we play yeah, them again just, in March. And the, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. The return games and, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. all right. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. I, cause yeah. I, I, I don't know. I just since uh, as a kid, you know, growing up in Indiana in a divided house, um, <laughs> the Indiana pre rivalry was, was awesome to me. And I, you know, I, I couldn't get enough of it. And, um, it, 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 it just like, it always felt like a rivalry that was to me, I was like, this is the best rivalry, you know, in the, in the country. But, uh, then I moved on to other things and I, you know, I moved to Ohio and I'm like, yeah, you know about the Indiana Purdue. They're like, what, what schools are they? I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, we're, you're you're at yeah. a football school, Mark. We don't care about that, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, so to see it like elevated, start to get elevated, and and to have two top ten teams and two schools coached by former players of their schools, and and so much history um, between those, you know, and and Matt Painter like wanting to go to IU, and he's not, he doesn't make a secret about that. He's like, I wanted to go mm-hmm. to IU, I, I did. And, and they wouldn't let they didn't want me coach and I didn't want me. So I took his whole identity and I put it on my team. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the, the whole thing's fascinating. I'm, I'm fired up. It's, it's a great time to, in the whole state, honestly, of, of Indiana, cause, cause shout out coach Maude and Butler and they, they kind of suck. Mm-hmm. They can't shoot for anything this year, but, uh, I'm fired up about that too. And I just, you know, I'm a guy ultimately at the end of the day, I, I get excited about basketball in the state of Indiana and, basketball is, is is in a very healthy spot so anyway i agree man no and those games are better when both teams are good when those wins have meaning in the you know in the big 10 race and you know i like it when the big 10 is good like i'm i'm happy i mean even though indiana kind of entered the season where everybody's just like well i guess they're the favorite because this conference isn't very good this year and now that clearly yeah. is not the case like there's teams you know, in this conference, you know, I think about growing up, man, those old Indiana, Ohio state games and Iowa Uh and Purdue. Mm -hmm. And like, they were, it was just like, it's felt like every big 10 team other than Northwestern and Wisconsin was in the top 15 when they would come in. And that's, you know, I don't know that we'll reach those heights. I don't know that the talent level is like that anymore, but the conference is good this year. Like what are your early impressions overall just of what you've seen? No, the conference conference is very good. Uh, If we're talking national title, good. It probably is IU Purdue. I think Michigan State had a little surge there out of the gate, but I think at the end of the day, Michigan State doesn't have enough playmakers. I think like they're missing that that one extra. Uh, you know, if, if if you put like a Gary Harris on this Michigan State team, I might think they're the best team in the country. But Gary Harris they is also not have on no this. depth. Yeah, like, they, they have. have the, no yeah. Depth. So like it's they're crazy. they're they're a team that's good enough to kind of beat anybody and hang around, but I don't think they're national title good. Um, Illinois is fascinating. I think Illinois does have the playmakers, but do they have the the um, do, does it all fit together? And can, do they have the consistency? Do they have the that? There's just there, Illinois had a hot start. They they played well um, in that little double header they had, um, but the consistency is always the issue with that team. And I I I'm curious to see how it's going to shake out with this group. Uh, Peru and IU are the two national title. Like if 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 you're if you're asking like which team should say I think we're good enough to win a national title. It's those two. And that's what makes that rivalry so interesting. I like this Ohio state team too, by the way, I think, Mm -hmm. I think Ohio state um, losing EJ Liddell and Malachi Branham. uh, A lot of people coming into the season were like, Ohio state's going to be a lot worse. We are, we are way deeper. um, So much more balanced offensively, so much more 
uh you know i it, there's there's a bunch of different guys that can beat you i like some of the issues we have is um like one dimensional players like ice likely from oklahoma state great defender you could leave him wide open couldn't hit the broad side of a barn you know and then like sean mcneil's or bryce sensible is probably a better example freshman kid great scorer nba scorer already can score every spot on the court does not know what a defensive stance is. Does, does, <laughs> does not have any clue. Um, so that's kind of the issues with Ohio State, but the talent's there. And I, 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 I'm fired up about this Ohio State team because I think it, I think we're very deep and and we'll be good. So uh, Maryland's been a fun surprise. I think Maryland's mm-hmm. pretty good. Iowa's good. Uh, Michigan Penn State is. Michigan's been up and down. Life. Penn State, dude. Penn State. How about Penn State? Penn State's going to beat some teams, and and it's going to look bad because it's going to be Penn State, and you're going to have to like explain to people. There are going to be some IU fit. Like, I don't, I hope it's not IU, but like, we'll, we'll use like Iowa for, for example. Penn State's going to smack Iowa, say, this year. And Iowa fans are going to be like, how the hell did we lose to Penn State? And the people that know are going to have to explain to their friends, like, no, 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 that's not that bad of a loss. Like, Penn State yeah, is, they're decent. Penn State is, is pretty good. Um, so yeah, the Big Ten's in a great spot, man. I, I, I think like ultimately the only way to shut the haters up is to win a national championship. And unfortunately, I, I do think we still only have two real candidates right now. Um, but as far as the depth of the league and, and, uh, I mean, so far in the non-conference season, the big 10 has stepped up in a big way. So. More job security, Chris Holtman or Ryan day. Oh my God, dude. Don't get me started on Ryan day. We're going to be here for three hours. You get me started on Ryan day. I've been, oh my God. I, I can't tell you, man, living in Los Angeles and, uh, and, and walking around and to my friends that I have out here. And and just trying to get them to care one iota about Ryan Day. Like I'm just like, can I get five minutes of your time to complain about <laughs> the play calling in this game? And they're like, Mark, you, I gave you five minutes. I, I gave you five hours on Saturday after the game, and I'm like, I need five more minutes. What were we doing on first and thirty five? First and thirty five, and we run a toss to the right. No, so don't get me started. Um, <laughs> Chris Holtman has better job security if you're if you're if you're polling people right now. If you're not, I really <laughs> just uh, go, go to if you if you want to be entertained go to an ohio state message board search mike Vrabel's name hit enter and then just grab your popcorn and see what happens next <laughs> so. uh well mark thanks man we appreciate your time usually you're on here after an iu ohio state game yeah, gloating about a uh, about a buckeye victory has well, indiana ever won one of the games when you yeah, know i know because <laughs> well, no, i pull a tate and i don't i just say no i'm like yeah. if, if ohio state's not playing well i'm like no i'm not going on that show i'm not going on the show yeah. and then we win and i text you right away and i'm like jared i'm available hey man when, you got a spot <laughs> No, uh, uh, I'll do it this year. When when do they? I'll do it this year. We'll figure it out. I'll, I'll awesome. come on. I'll 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 promise you that I'll come on. Um, because I, I I I do enjoy doing it. And I do enjoy uh you know I I enjoy watching Indiana because uh yeah I said the we thing earlier and as you said my my dad went to IU and my brother went to IU and uh I know I've I've said the story a million times on the show but uh yeah as as I get older especially man like it it, it you learn that like the relationship with your your dad and brother like it just becomes stronger and stronger and one of the ways that i found that i that i keep a very tight relationship with my brother and father is watching indiana basketball so i know mm-hmm. that if if i need an excuse to talk to my dad i know i can just call him and talk to him about trace or you know uh geronimo or or trey mm-hmm. galloway or any of the guys race thompson he, li- he loves him um so yeah. Tell your dad so, if he is worried about Trey Galloway shooting in our private community. We did like a five minute video breakdown of Trey Galloway shooting. Oh, really? Because this is this is what we do in our uh, in our downtime. So I'll uh, I'll send it to you. And you oh, can that's send it awesome. To him and he'll oh, he'll feel awesome. much better. All right, that's good to know. That's good to know. All right, man. Well, uh, cool. Go Hoosiers, I guess, and 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 go Buckeyes while we're at it. We gotta we gotta beat Duke. How how sweet of a absolutely. Uh, how no, sweet of a night would that be? We get back to back Ohio State over Duke and Indiana over Carolina in the same night. That's a that'd be whew. that would be beautiful. That would be that nice. would be beautiful. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> All right, man. Well, take care. Good luck with the show. Everybody, I'm sure, listens. But if you don't, make sure that you subscribe to Titus and Tate. It is the best national college basketball podcast and the one that most IU fans like because that's why I will credit you and Tate for. You guys have been the most respectful about Indiana, even during our downtimes, than uh, than all the other national college basketball podcasts. Is it we possible tend to use that Indiana Indi- and its fans as a punchline? So we poss- uh, we appreciate it. Is it possible that Indiana spent X million dollars to get worse, Jared? 
is it, is it possible? <laughs> <laughs> that is it was possible? a headline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. All that's right. great. Shouts well, to Devin Downey. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Thanks See for coming you, on. Thanks for having and, me. Uh, yeah, man. Give Tate our best. All right. <laughs> Appreciate it. See you. See you, man.